What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, what we're gonna do is this example. So you have 500 meters of fencing to divide a field into three equal sections as below. So the fencing is gonna go all the way around and then it's gonna also be over here. So we got three questions here. We got to express the total area as a function of the width. We got to find the domain and range, and then we got to find what dimensions will give a maximum area. So with a question like this, what I like to do is introduce some variables. And more specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal the width of this area. And then I'm going to let y equal the length. Okay, now you may use different letters. You could even use W for width and then L for length. I'm going to just use X and Y. So if X is the width, that's this over here. And then Y is the length, that's going to be this over here. But notice that we have these pieces of the fence as well. So this is going to be X and that's going to be X as well. And notice that all of these pieces your constraint is 500 meters of fencing. That's how much fencing you have. And so we can create an equation for this constraint. So we have 500 meters of fencing, and that has to be used up in both of these y's here. So 2y plus these four x's. Okay, so that there is called your constraint. Right, you're limited to or constrained to 500 meters of fencing for the, uh, these six pieces, these two Y pieces, and then these four X pieces. Right, so that's the constraint. Now, what are we doing? In part A, we're expressing the total area as a function of the width. So what they want is the total area as a function of the width as a function of x. Now, just in general, what's the total area of this gonna be? Notice it's a rectangle, right? And the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area, the total area here, is gonna be what? It's gonna be x times y, right? The width times the length, or the length times the width. However, notice that we want the total area as a function of only the width. We want it as a function of only the x value. What's the problem here? We got this y value, right? So right now we have the area as a function of the x value and the y value of the width and the length. So how can we change it for it to only be as a function of the width for only x values to be here? And the answer is we can use this constraint over here. What we can do is we could take this constraint, we could isolate for this y value, have an expression, and then take that expression, which is just going to be in terms of x, and plug it in for that y value. And then this is going to be all in terms of x, all in terms of the width. So let me show you how to do that. First off, notice that everything here divides by 2 smoothly. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take everything and divide it by 2. Now, this is not always going to happen. But if it does, I like to do this step just because it simplifies everything. So 500 divided by 2 is 250. 2y divided by 2, the 2's cancel out, we got y. And then 4x divided by 2, that just ends up being 2x. All right, so took everything, divided by 2. So this is the exact same as 500 equals 2y plus 4x, right? Because we divided both sides by and now notice the y is by itself. So what we can do, we can bring the 2x over. So we'll have y equals 250 minus 2x. Now, if you didn't divide by 2 and, and you were uh, isolating for this y, you'd bring the 4x over. So you'd have 500 minus 4x equals 2y. But then you'd end up dividing everything by 2 anyways to get the y by itself. And you'd end up with 250 minus 2x. Right, so I'm going to put the y on the left side. So y equals 250 minus 2x. And so we know the, because of this constraint here, we know the y value always has to equal that right there. We just took the constraint, rearranged it. 
So I could take this and plug it in for this y value. And so we'll have a of x equals x times the y value, which is 250 minus 2x. And now notice we have the area as a function of just the, uh, of just the width. Notice it's only x values here. And again, we use the constraint to plug in for that y value. So notice that this here is a quadratic that is factored. Notice we have two factors here. If you were to expand it, you'd end up with 250x minus 2x squared. Or if you rearranged it, negative 2x squared plus 250x. Right, so either this or this right here, this is in standard form. That would be the total area as a function of width. I would just keep it like that. So now what we got to do is we got to take this function here and we have to find the domain and range of it and also the dimensions that's going to maximize this area here. But before doing all that, what I actually recommend is because we have it in a factored form, I actually recommend we take this and we graph it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing the area in terms of the width. So because it's in factored form, notice that we can find these intercepts here along this x-axis. So we have a equals x 250 minus 2x. So what are we going to be finding first? Well, when does that a value equal 0? Well, notice that that's going to happen at an x value of 0 here. That's an x value of 0. So we know that this area here is going to be at the, or uh, this area function is definitely going to be at the origin. And then what's the other x value going to be? Well, we would take this bracket and find out when does it equal 0. Because if this whole bracket is 0, then 0 times anything here is going to equal 0. So if we solve for this x here, we'll have 250 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2, x would be 125. So that is the other intercept. Like that. And if we were to expand this, we expanded it before, it was negative 2x squared plus 250x. Because that a value is negative 2, when we expand it, it's a negative, so we know this parabola is going to be opening down. And so if these are the intercepts and the parabola is opening down, we know it's going to look something like that. Right? So taking this function and graphing it, it looks like that area in terms of x, and the two intercepts are at 0 and 125. Now, notice because we have the two intercepts that we found over here, we can also find what this vertex is going to be. Remember, what's, an x, what's the x value of the vertex going to be for a parabola if we have the two intercepts? It's going to be the middle of the intercepts. And so what we can do is we can just add those two intercepts and divide it by 2. That's going to give us that middle number right there. And when we do that, we would end up getting 62.5. Right, so that is over here. Okay, and now, so notice for this function, we, we got the x value, 62.5. Well, what's going to be the y value? What's going to be the area value when x is 62.5? Well, what we can do, that's going to be the y value of the vertex. We can just take this x value, 62.5, and plug it into the function that we have. So we'll have... 62.5 times 250 minus 2 times 62.5, which would give us 62.5 times 125, which would end up giving us 7,812.5. That's going to be the y value of this vertex, 7,812.5. Right, so that, this function is this.
over here. Now, because we have this, it's going to be a lot easier to find the domain and range and also the dimensions that are going to give us the maximum area, which is going to happen over here. So let's start with the domain and uh, the range. Now remember, for a parabola, just an abstract parabola with no situation, with no word problem involved, the domain is always going to be what? X, E, R. X can be anything, right? But in this case, notice that there is a constraint on X. Notice that it can't be less than zero because if X is less than zero, if we plug in a negative value here for the X's, we're going to get a negative area, which doesn't make sense in the context of this problem that we're working with. And notice if X is greater than 125, notice that this bracket would be negative. So we'd have a negative number times a positive, which would also give us a negative area, which wouldn't make sense in this problem. And so the domain is more restricted because we're dealing with a word problem here. The domain, the X values between zero and 125. And a lot of times actually I wanna mention this is it won't be inclusive of these. I made it inclusive. Uh, so some, Solutions, you'll see it inclusive. Some you'll see it won't be inclusive. Let's just say it's not inclusive because we shouldn't be having, if we have 500 meters of fencing, it's impossible unless we line them all up in like straight lines to have an area of zero. So let's say that it's not inclusive of zero and 125, but just wanna give a heads up. Some solutions you might see that equal sign there, all right? But I'm not gonna put it there. So the X value has to be between zero and 125 and that will guarantee for us to have some kind of area, some kind of positive area. Okay, and then if we express this in interval notation, we say X is from zero to 125 and it's circle brackets because it's not inclusive. If it was inclusive, it would be square brackets. Okay, what's the range gonna be? Now notice that the range in this case is the uh, values that the dependent variable could take. What's the dependent variable? It's area in this case. And notice that the area can go from zero. Well, it's not going to equal zero because we said X can't be zero, 125. But the area has to be positive all the way to this maximum area of 7,812.5. So we would say the range is area can be anything as long as area is from zero to an inclusive of 7,812.5. So notice we didn't make it inclusive of zero, but we did make it inclusive of that maximum because that point is on the function. That point is possible. And then if we put this in this notation, we would say uh, the area is an element from zero, circle brackets, to 7,812.5, square brackets like that, right? So for this word problem, that is the domain and that is the range right there. And then part C is asking when, what dimensions will give a maximum area? So notice the maximum area is this over here. Well, we know that the X value is gonna be 62.5. That's gonna give us the maximum area, but what is the X value? Well, the X value is the width. What about the length? What's the length gonna be? Well, notice we could take this 62.5 and we could plug it in here to get the Y value, to get the length. And when we do that, when we plug in that X value here, we'd get a Y value of 125. All right, so dimensions of 125 meters by 62.5 meters these two dimensions is what's gonna give us the maximum area. And you can actually test it. If I take this, multiply it by this, you'll end up getting that number, 7,812.5 meters squared.